What is up, everyone? We're in the Florida Keys. I'm J.D. Odom. This is Odom Outdoors. I got my kids in the water here. This tail is Yeah? We got yellowtail snapper chummed up for them to check out. We're here for Florida lobster sportsman season. Uh, right now is our first day here. We're at, yeah? We're just at Lou Key doing some fun swimming. Uh, later on today, we're going to start scouting and doing some serious stuff. But uh, stick around. Show you how we catch some lobsters. Ready, go. Yeah. They're hungry, aren't they? Yeah. They're always hungry. on YouTube, Key West Waterman, Aaron Young. This is the first time I've got one of these, but he says do not sleep on the spider crabs. So I grabbed him out of the hole, put him in the, Jen put him in the cooler, and unfortunately when I just grabbed him out of the cooler, one of the claws broke off. Um, but he was intact when he went in there. So we're gonna cook him along with the lobsters when we get them. Uh, never tried them before, but apparently they're amazing. So this will be a learning experience. So stay tuned see how this guy tastes all right Jen's in there scouting she just found a lionfish so we're trying to get JD his first fish he wants to shoot his first fish with a spear gun so we're gonna see if he can get on this thing This is little JD's first fish, and it's on the gun that I actually learned to spearfish on with my dad back in the 90s. Hold him up a little bit, Bubba. 
like that. There my dad go. just passed away in April and we ended up engraving his I love you signature into the gun. And so now little JD's first fish is on the same gun that I shot my first fish. What's on. your first fish, buddy? A lionfish. You lionfish, never right? Touch these. They're, we, they're venomous. If you touch their spine, they will make you hurt. So you should never touch these. Hold them up bit, a little bit, buddy. with permission. <laughs> yeah. Good job, exactly. Bubba. Good first fish, Bubba. Like that. Hey guys, so we were we just went down there and Uncle Mike found this a sea, a sea biscuit. So sea biscuits are related to sand dollars. This one's alive. This one's a dead. You could tell by them. This one is great. This one is black. Right. So black ones are alive. Brown ones are dead, I think. Yeah, that's perfect, buddy. So let's let the live one go. I want it to let go. Oh, sorry. You let it go last time. Then we had to catch it again. All right, good job. Dad, and this one is, we on. keep the dead ones. We're at Robbie's in Almorada. We're here to feed the tarpon. <laughs> you see them all down here. Hey, come on, Ryder. Hey, Ryder. You do it, Bubba? Lay down. Watch this. I told you that's the one that. No. Did it hurt at all? Uh, it'll usually leave little scratches, but it's not bad. They don't have any teeth. They they have like teeth like a bass. That one, that bass. one's the like demogorgon. That one's the demogorgon. So you gotta hold it down lower, buddy. Lower, lower. Lower, bud. Lower, bud. Lower, bud. Don't get scared and drop it. Let him grab it from you, okay? Hang on, Kate. Further down. Hold it further down so they can get to it. Bigger. Down, buddy. Don't be scared. In a minute, baby. Oh, he got it, didn't he? Nice, buddy. He almost bit me. You could also just drop it. Don't drop it. He got me. It's all right. Oh! <laughs> yeah, good one. Scoot out a little more, Katie. I no, come you. on, honey. You fall in. Daddy's oh, gonna go with on. you. They don't hurt, Kate. All right. Oh. <laughs> good try. You got it. See? Good job. Give me knuckles. Bye, bye, Here, in. then try You're another fine. one. Good. Here, I want you guys. To oh. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah? Just hold on to it tight and you can Oh he got oh he splashed me. <laughs> well here we are. We finally got into the lobster ring. This is the second or third spot we hit on day one of mini season. Um, this is probably only about 10 or 12 feet deep here. We normally never scuba dive in this depth. And I'm actually a little ashamed that we had to put on scuba gear, but it is what it is. The visibility was really bad, and conditions topside were deteriorating, as you'll see later in the video. Uh, it was a pretty nasty day one and, and day two as well of a uh, mini season down in Marathon. So. We ended up throwing on the scuba gear just to get it done and get back in as soon as possible. You can see here there's a little ledge with a handful of lobsters. Quite a few shorts out there on this trip as well. So obviously we just took the big ones. Lots of times you can tell just by looking at them that they're short. So you just take the biggest ones out until you start getting to the shorts and then you move on. This little guy's in a hole all by himself. Tickled him on out of there and got him. A lot of these too, if you if you know they're big enough, you don't need to measure them. When you've caught enough of them, you can tell when they're big enough or when they're small enough. You only really measure them if they're borderline. Thank you. 
show of him in the bag there. Alright, this is Jen catching one here. So, earlier in the trip, Jen had broke my mask that holds my GoPro by accident. So, where, where normally I would have a GoPro on my head and just film that way, this time we couldn't do that. So, we actually had to have two divers in the water at the same time and one, one person film another person. That's a keeper there. looking here there's some shorts in those holes there so she doesn't mess with them I'm filming her here I believe she's trying to get a lobster and a spider crab comes out of the hole so it's a nice size one too biggest one of the trip I think so she grabs him we end up cooking him up later along with several others that we caught Here we are, first day of lobster season, 2023. Uh, we were going for these guys, which is the Caribbean spiny lobster, or the Florida spiny lobster. This guy was in a hole by himself, and this guy was not far behind. The spider crab. We're told by Key West Waterman yeah. that they're good to eat, so we're going to try them out. We've got two already, so this will be a third one, make a nice dinner. We got two yesterday. So here we go. We are seven into our limit now. All right, this is the next spot here. Jen and my buddy Mike are on this dive. I'm driving the boat with the kids. I think they end up pulling 10 lobsters off this hole, which was the best spot of the day. Sadly, normally we do a lot better, but I'm pretty sad the best spot of the day is only 10 lobsters. But I think they get a crab or two as well, so those are nice little bonuses. You can see my buddy Mike tickling the lobsters out here and getting them. Got several in the bag already there. Got some lobsters in a hole here with a green moray. Surprisingly, the green morays, they get a lot bigger than the black and white snowflake ones. And I've never had an issue with the green morays. Although they're bigger and nastier looking, they've never bothered me one bit. You know, I guess if you stick your hand in, in a hole they're in, they'll probably bite you, but I've never had them be aggressive. Whereas the black and white ones, the smaller ones, I've had them come out, come out of their hole after me which is odd. I suppose they might have little man complex or something. I don't know. But here's Mike catching another one. Jen and Mike came up. They were down for a while. And they did pretty good. We got a crab. Woo! A crab! They got a nice crab. Bugs there. Let me get a measuring stick. Oh, all them are hands. Oh, a crab is, is strong. All right, that's all right. All right. So me and Mike were down for like what five minutes tops. Yeah, that, yeah. Found a couple shorts. We come up and it's gotten even worse up here. So, Jen, Jen says it's bad. This is our last spot of the day. The weather just got too nasty after this. We had some big storms coming in. 
once we came up from this dive. So, got the last few bugs and headed for home. Got a little remora here swimming around them. I'm not sure why they do that, if they're just looking for a free meal or if they think you're a shark and they want to suck onto you maybe. But it's pretty common to have them swim in circles around you. Might get one out of the net there. Catching them, them lobsters in the net is pretty easy, but getting them out is the hard part sometimes. They get all tangled in there with their spines. lobsters so kind of half our limit um, but we're gonna try to get back out there this afternoon I don't know what's gonna happen uh, we have big storms coming in in about an, any minute now so we're gonna try to get this done real quick but we'll try to get back out there later if not there's always tomorrow so just real quick show you how to measure them these have all been measured but just to show you guys this is a, a big one um, we wouldn't need to measure one this size we know he's big enough um, but just to show you guys, there's a little meaty portion there, their eyeball. When you measure them, you don't want to put it there. You want to put it on the hard part right there. Don't get that meaty portion. So there, and then he's obviously past the notch there. Um, so he's easily legal. Didn't need to measure him. Can I talk this about guy, it? here, one second, buddy. This guy, on the other hand, is barely legal. You can see it almost slips over. Now, if he was just a little bit smaller, it would slip over like that, but he's not. I'm pushing down and it's not going over. So if it had gone like that or was back here, he would be too small, but he's just barely legal right there. I go back and forth and it doesn't slip over. So he's good. We got 17. Can I show? We up with uh, can, can... two of these spider crabs we're going to cook up as well. That one's a good one. A lot of people just grab them and ring them like this. You twist and the uh, tail separates from the head, but we don't like to do that because I think you lose some of the meat. So I like to come in here with a knife, cut around. Hey, what about the cement part? We'll rinse the, the uh, cement down when we're done. So you do the top, same thing over here on the bottom, kind of follow the outline there. And then there's barely any meat if any meat left in the head then you want to so you see here the entrails are still in there so you want to snap off one of the antennas there stick it in the butt hole here that's actually you want it too wide so these spikes on there only go one way. So if you run your fingers this way, they won't catch. If you run them this way, they catch. So you put it in there. Kind of give it a twist. Let's get this off. Give it a twist. You can see all that nastiness comes out. You do not want to eat that. So now you go to clean lobster. You do that again through the rest of them and you're good to go. Hey dad, can I talk? So All right, buddy, show us how they talk. You, they do this. If you can also make noise. Like show them how to do it. You push. That rubs. Grab, the, grab both of them, buddy. That, One in each hand. That rubs against that and makes noise. That's how they talk. And that is an awesome way to call in hogfish when you're down at the bottom. Yeah, don't, don't tell them that. We can't tell them all the good secrets. <laughs> all right, yeah, so that's actually a good secret. So this is actually a really cool secret and one of my best hogfish dives I've ever had in the middle grounds. Uh, one of my buddies told me to do this and so we had a lobster. We, uh, I went down there and 
push his knuckles back and forth and that's a like a distress signal from the lobster um, so any fish in the area particularly hogfish come in to check that out um, so pretty cool little secret I've only done it once but it worked amazingly well do, uh, do you draw a knife for me for a I did not but you can use this one here go ahead give it a try hurry up because it's starting to rain we gotta, we gotta work through these guys Nope. Nope. Turn them around. Hold them like that now. There you go, buddy. Other way. Other way, baby. Flip yep. your blade. There you go. Good job. That's good. Now and put the knife, the knife down. The knife. Now just grab his tail and pull. And most of the meat's already cut, so it'll pop right out. Good there job, go. buddy. Good job. Oh, that face is a face of disgust. All right. I got the spider crabs going in. There's one. This guy here is still alive. So we're gonna hit his off switch here, down there, there, claws go limp, he's done. He can go in, and then we got two more from the other day. All right. All right, so they've been in there boiling and some water, some vinegar and sea salt for 13 minutes now. We're going to go into an ice bath to stop the cooking. That's a good one there. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a good one. That, that claw that fell off on the side. Start of day two of lobster season down in Marathon this year. Stormed all night here. It's supposed to clear out at 8, but I'll believe it when I see it. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and apologize for this footage right now. This was shot by my eight-year-old son, little JD. But just so you know what's going on here, I'm noodling a black grouper out of a hole. So I'll talk about it here in just a second, so stick around. We find him in the hole, and I wasn't sure if he was big enough, so I didn't want to shoot him. But figured I'd try noodling him out, and turns out it worked. All right, so we found this flat grouper in a hole, lobster hole we were looking at. I would have never shot this fish because he was too borderline to take a shot at. And when I got him out of the hole, I thought there's no way he's legal. But just measured him and he is just a smidge over 24 inches. So this is a legal black grouper and I ended up noodling him out of the hole like them boys do catching catfish. So pretty cool, I've done it before with red grouper because they kind of stay in their holes a lot, but first time I've ever noodled out a black grouper. What do you got there, babe? Somebody's spear gun, it's all ours. Nice, looks like, looks like an AB biller. We can fix it up, that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> when lobstering slow, you can get spear guns. Pretty rough shape though. All the cormorants, guys. We're gonna run them down. Don't run them down. These poor guys are offshore. I'm and... eating all my fish. Yeah. That's cool. My fish. All right. Well, that's our haul for day two of mini season 2023. We've got things falling all over the place. Lobster's trying to get away. Pretty pathetic, but it was the best we could do given the conditions. Three lobsters, a crab, a grouper, and a spear gun that just fell in the water. Good thing the shaft is out of it. Now it floats.
Oh, babe, that was not smart. Yeah! I made it, didn't I? Luckily. All right. What's up, everybody? We're in the kitchen. We got some lobster tails we're gonna make. Um, what's kind of cool, you see the color variation in them and they all came from the same place. I don't know what causes that, but it's interesting. Uh, we got the grouper that I noodled out, black grouper, and then we got some of the nuggets from what was left of the lionfish that my son shot. So to prepare these lobsters, you're just gonna cut down the top of them here. A knife works, but if you got kitchen shears handy, that's pretty easy. All the way down, not all the way through their tail, but right down to that last little link there in their shell. And then you're gonna, oh, gonna cut through the meat. Not through the bottom, but just through the, the flesh. And then kind of butterfly them open. That way they'll lay open flat like that when they cook and they'll present well. Right, babe? Yes. You gotta have the lobster tail boat in order to get that crab stuffing in right. Then you can dig in with your spoon here. Pull the meat out. And put your shell aside. We're going to need that later. So that orange part there, that is their new shell that they're creating underneath their old shell so that when they shed this, they molt it. And they'll, you'll, every now and then you'll catch a lobster and he'll be soft. That's what happens. They just shedded their, they just molted their old shell. And this is their new shell that they're growing underneath it. And that's what makes Florida lobster tough and chewy, and that's why they get a bad rap sometimes. So in order to get rid of that, you can skin them like a fish. And you do your best, it's not easy. It's not as easy as skinning a fish, but you can get rid of a lot of that chewiness. So you can see the meat there versus the new shell they're growing. Like I said, you don't have to get it all, but if you get the majority of it, it'll taste a lot better. There you go, and you see little pre-segmented cuts in these. They kind of come pre-cut for you. You just cut along there. They're the perfect size little nuggets. For our crab stuffing, we've got crushed Ritz crackers, panko breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, mayo, Some melted butter. This is the Kerry Gold garlic Kerry, butter. Yep, Kerry's Gold garlic and herb butter. The best butter in the world. That all mixed together, and then we'll put the crab in last so it doesn't get broken up too much. Don't forget your lemon juice. Oh, right. Lemon juice right here. Last thing that goes in is the crab meat. This is four or five spider crabs. It's the first time we're trying them. Got it all mixed together. All right, over here we got some melted butter. We got our lobster chunks. They're gonna go in there. They're only gonna cook about halfway. We're not going to cook them for long because they're going to cook some more in the oven. 
in just a minute when we combine it all. And we're also going to put some, a little bit of the Kinder's seafood seasoning on it. All right, so I got it about halfway cooked now. We don't want to overcook this because it's going to continue to cook in the oven. And all we're going to do Would you like me to get you a spoon? Yeah, I'll make this work. Okay. We're going to scoop these into here. We got all the lobster stuffed in there. Now we can start topping it off with the crab stuffing. Oh, look at all this lovely chunks of crab. I wouldn't do much more than that. Oh no, it's gonna topple over. Mm-hmm. Looks good. Jen's working our dessert here, making a brookie for us. <laughs> I got the black grouper fillets. All I'm gonna do with these. There's a little bit of olive oil on them. And some of this Kinder seafood seasoning. And then I'm going to grill them. And these are going to be our grouper sandwiches. Grouper is going on the grill. All right, you got some lemon juice with some garlic and herb butter going on. Grill is hot. My dad would call that flame kissed. And the flames just shoot right up there and touch the food for just a second. All right, the big pieces are done. And the fish is done. All right, lobster tails baked in the oven for about 15 or 20 minutes at 425, is that correct, 425? Mm -hmm. Yep. We broiled the last five minutes just to give it a nice crispy top. Brown top. We got some Cuban rolls here. Garlic aioli right there. I'm looking for the fish. Here. You should do the aioli first. There's an order of things. <laughs> garlic aioli. Uh -huh. Jen's world famous garlic aioli. Does it go on top and bottom? Yeah, I do. Okay. You can never have too much garlic. It's not a thing. You, you can't have too much mayonnaise though, so yeah. Why do you scrape it back in there when I'm done? It's just bread. Then lettuce, then the, meat, then the fish. Lettuce? Yeah. And then a nice big filet of black grouper <laughs> with kids screaming in the background. Oh, did you want avocado? Yes. I'm about to get to it. And some avocado in it. That looks good. Mm -hmm. There we go. Grouper sandwich with lobster tails and crab, spider crab stuffing. We need the first bite of your fish this is, sandwich. This is your, this lion, is your fish lion fish. fish. You shot. Well, two of them. Let's see it. How is it? Thumbs up. Thumbs so up, you sandwich. shot, helped clean 
some of the fish and lobster, and now you're eating it, right? Awesome, buddy. What about me? You help too, baby. All right. What everybody think of the it's meal? Good, it's good. It's good. Very good. Very good. good. I like good. That crab stuffing was amazing. Like Definitely worth the spread crust. What did you like better? Well, what did you like better, JD? The uh, your fish sandwich or the lobster? Fish sandwich. Fish sandwich, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the lobster was the, the lobster, the lobster stuffing, was huh? Amazing. Lobster, the lobster was good. Was, I loved how the lobster wasn't chewy when you removed hey. the um, outer layer. It made it a thousand times better. There you go. And what'd you think, Katie? It's dead. Okay, I think that's good. All right. So thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. Subscribe down below and see you later. Bye. Bye.